All right, today we're going to just do a general overview of the setting up of an RC plane. And we're going to talk about what I call the balance triangle. And the balance triangle it provides you with the aspects at which we can manipulate to set up a plane correctly to get the plane to fit you in your flying style instead of making you have to fit the plane in the way that it's set up. The balance triangle is comprised of three different areas. The first being the center of gravity. The center of gravity is the axis at which everything happens. That's where the plane rotates. That determines how fast the plane flies or how slow the plane can fly, that determines its stall speed. It determines how active the tail is going to feel, how responsive the tail is, how much power is given to the propeller. The center of gravity is the central point where everything happens. The cool part about electric planes is the center of gravity is consistent. It's locked in. It doesn't move. Here's a quick commercial break for RC Air. One of the things that we do that I think is really cool is when a flying club hosts an event, that event you can now pay for the event tickets and register in advance. You can pay for food, concessions, uh, you can sell t-shirts in advance. You can also have your camping spots laid out, identify those, and sell those camping spots in advance. It's a one single system to manage that event and manage your club. If your club is looking for a site or looking for an easy way to manage what they do, make sure, make sure you reach out to me at don at rc-air.com. I'd be happy to talk to you about what we do and how it works. The next portion of the balance triangle is thrust. And there's a huge variability within thrust. The CG may be consistent, but with thrust, if you're low on the throttle, you might be at zero RPMs, depending on uh, how your plane is set up. You may be at 7,200 RPMs if your plane is full throttle and it's set up a certain way. Okay, you may even be more than that, depending on the type of plane you have. Now, everywhere you move in between changes the amount of airflow that is going across the surfaces. And the amount of airflow going across the surfaces is what determines the stability of your plane. So depending on how much throw and all the other stuff, it, it, that amount of air going across the surfaces matters. Now one of the things that we can do to make that more consistent is to add a high idle. So even with my little foam planes, uh, what I have, I just have my high idle on a switch. So I turn it on. And I mean, you can see it's high enough that it actually pulls the plane forward, okay? I do that with my small planes. I do it with my large planes. My high idle is just enough that it causes my plane to pull slightly forward when it's sitting on pavement. If my plane is sitting on grass, chances are it doesn't move forward. That's about where I set my high idle, and it just depends on the plane. The way that I fly, I fly with a pretty constant and steady throttle and usually I'm not using enough throttle. I, I, I tend to fly a little bit too slow a lot of the times. That's, that's one of my faults. <sighs> Some people you'll find that they're wide open and they just push the throttle forward and they're full throttle the entire flight. Okay, at least it's consistent. It's consistent. The amount of air going across their surfaces always remains the same. And they can set up a plane to do that, and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, I like to fly somewhere just a little bit above half, somewhere between half and three quarters. If I'm going downwind, I might have to throttle up just a little bit. When I'm making a turn and I'm using my surfaces, so if my ailerons are deflecting and my tail is deflecting, my rudder's deflecting, those are all air brake. That's going to slow the plane down. I'm going to push the throttle forward just a little bit to increase the amount of speed that the plane is traveling, increase the airflow going across the surfaces so the plane doesn't stall when I'm turning. When I'm flat and level, I'm consistent. My plane is traveling at the relatively same speed. I want to try to make it so that my plane does an upline at the same rate it does a downline. When I do that, 
then we get to the next leg of the balanced triangle. And the next leg of the balanced triangle is throw. And within throw, you may have a plane that has 45 degrees of deflection. You may have a plane at 28 degrees. You may have one at 65 degrees. It doesn't mean that it's wrong in any way. It depends on how the plane is set up and what it's meant to do. Someone who is flying with a forward CG may need a more aggressive prop to give them more thrust to go across the surfaces that are at 65 degrees because as we move the plane forward, the amount of air going across the surfaces or the leverage at which the surfaces have, the power that they have, is reduced. So we have to add more throw and more thrust to make the surfaces have become more reactive. Someone who is flying with more of a neutral CG, uh, either center or even towards the aft, may only have 45 degrees of throw to do 3D maneuvers and different things like that. And they have to run a less aggressive pitch in order to reduce the airflow that goes across those surfaces to make those surfaces not quite as sensitive. It's a balance. It's a balance between the center of gravity, the amount of thrust going across, and the amount of throw we have. We can make a lot of changes within them, and if we do it right, and we start working with the plane and working with how you fly, starting with the center of gravity, moving to thrust, what's going to happen is then we can get to throw, and then we can come back to center of gravity, and we can start dialing it in, making small adjustments to get the plane to fit you and your flying style instead of making you have to fit the plane and the way that it's set up. You're going to enjoy it more. It will fly better for you. Uh, next time, we're going to dive a little bit deeper into center of gravity. We're going to understand a little bit more about how that affects on a micro level, the small adjustments, what they do, and how they change the way the plane flies. Until next time, happy landings. Thanks for your time. Please remember to subscribe. Click the little bell to follow. If you're willing to share this content, I sure appreciate it. Take care.